Zion, do you see Miss Dominique's house? Zion, where are you? You're at Miss Dominique's house, huh? Is that close again? Yes. And we're right here at the Watts Towers. So. What? What'd you say? There it is. You see it? You see the What's that? Tower What's that, Zion? Lost, that one was the Watts Towers. Yeah. Can you say that again? Over there. Zion, do you see the Watts Towers over there? Where are they? Pointed them. The Watts Towers. Yeah, there they are. Remember, I already did go to the Watts Towers. Yeah. Now we're going to Miss Dominique's house. It's closer to the Watts oh. Tavern. And tell us what this is, what your house is. It's a what? It's, it's called the R. Cloud um, House, and it's an artist in residency. And I'm their first resident. Wow, beautiful. These are your works, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, they're so beautiful. Good God, you're so amazing. I wish I could spend more time. Yeah. Watch, don't step on anything. This is yeah. yours too? Uh-huh. Oh my god. Do you Aie see that? Aie Omode. What does Aie Omode mean? Earth child. <laughs> In what language? It is Yoruba. Yoruba. Yeah. I should and these are ostrich eggshells making up this mosaic around the side. They're real? Those are real ostrich eggshells. Mm. Myopic vision mm -hmm. is there. And of course you remember that piece. Yeah. And who made that piece? <laughs> J. Michael Walker. Yeah. Wow. And then this is another piece. Have you ever exhibited that one, The Myopic Vision? Oh, yes. And all of these were in the exhibit. And this was part so that people could have an experience of uh -huh. actually coming through uh -huh. the house and that it's filled with artwork, you know? Wow. And so if life cycle. Uh, is this the same old, same old? About Jean-Miguel Basquiat. <laughs> and, and same then, old, same old. Yeah. And uh, oh, over okay. here is wow. beige and baby blue. We got Jean-Michel Basquiat in there. Is this yeah. the same old? That's beautiful. Beige wow. and baby blues. And uh, jump piano. Wow, you are amazing. Look at this. And look, they're coming out of a, of a guitar. Do you see her artwork, Zion? Yeah. Do you like it? I think so. What? I think so, I said. You think you like Miss Dominique's mm -hmm. art? Yeah. I love it. She said, I and think so. Zion, would you like an apple? Mm. Uh, or chips? Chips. Vegetable chips? Okay. So thank you. What a beautiful home. Yeah, so it, you know, I, I feel about, you know, space is the same as I feel about art. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, they, they deserve and really require the kind of attention uh, of your space mm -hmm. that you give the rest of your life and your art. Mm -hmm. And so I've decided to treat the house as if it were my work of art. Mm -hmm. Here. There you go. What do you say? You. you want to sit down and eat your chips? Yeah. Sit here and eat. Mm -hmm. What is that? You're giving on. It's a pretty color, right? There you go. Say thank you. Thank you. I'm going to drink some of that so you don't spill it, okay? Okay. Thank you, Miss Dominique. Okay, well, we'll close. Oh, that is good hibiscus tea. Yeah. With some honey in it, right? Mm hmm <laughs> Anything else you want to show us? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, there it is. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Wow. Oh, my Dominique. You are amazing. What I love about it right now is my truck is in the front and the back my nomad installation is here mm -hmm. and it almost it's getting closer and closer to being the full thing wow. and are you really going to travel oh, with this yes. the truck will will pull this it'll be on a trailer hitch 
And so this was done for, for the California African American Museum. And they really wanted me to share this proposal, this idea, but make it in a way that people will really feel it and understand it. But we didn't have enough resources, of course, to do the whole thing, so I did just an installation version. And of course, it had to have the porch, it had to show the wheels so that people realize this is a house on wheels. Are you going to live in it? And I will live in it. So to be the same size as this, but wow. 20 feet long, and it'll be complete like any other house. It will have all the basic needs, so have bathroom, kitchen, sleeping loft. But the whole idea is that it'll be created as a work of art that I then live inside of. Wow. And travel? And any, travel. And any destination plans? or uh, any, What are your stops? Any stops in mind or are you just going to well, go? As, as the nomad, it's, it's about going first mm -hmm. and, um, and following your path. And that path is not always something, you know, prescribed initially. It is to follow where you get an invitation, so it'll be very fluid. Are you going to carry your work in it? No. None of my work will go with me, and there will be no studio. But what will happen is that when I find things on the road, mm -hmm. because the beauty of doing assemblage art is what you find. Right. And so when you find something on the road, you address it right there, you document it, and then you leave it in the site. Hmm. Wow, beautiful. And this, so this is my truck, my 1954. Uh, and it's a what? A 19 what? A 1954. It's of course like the classic historical vehicle and it's what will pull me originally it was a tow truck. And then it got bought by a studio and did a commercial and became a moving truck. And so now it is my Can you truck. point to that? Point to that. You, so you bought this? I bought this. Wow. And this will pull the Nomad. Is it a gas guzzler? It, it is, but I plan on using an alternative fuel. Wow. Awesome. You've made a reference that you couldn't, your vision. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. This piece is about that. Oh. Yeah. Th this piece, myopic vision, uh, was about my, my 20th anniversary of that shift in sight. And I think of it as just that. Um, even though it is a blindness, it is uh, not that I can't see. Um, a blindness is, is referring to how it has affected my, my eyesight. And there is a difference. So I went from being a painter and two-dimensional artist to becoming a three-dimensional artist. And this piece is about the way that thinking has reshaped itself. And I learned from it the difference between sight and vision. What is the difference? And the difference is that sight is a physical manifestation. You know, you use it, your eyes are a tool. But vision is what an artist has. And regardless of how much alteration happens with my sight, I have actually grown in my vision. And that's the important thing. So what is it that, what is the impairment, the physical impairment? That the you physical have? impairment, text, uh, juvenile macular uh, degeneration but it is similar to macular degeneration that is age related but more difficult and challenging because it's genetically based and so they can't do anything about it. I don't wear glasses I all of these were my old magnification tools magnification helps but it doesn't ever it doesn't change the fact of this is my sight now what is can you describe it to us it, what what it is and you used to be able to see right oh i had 20 20 and never wore glasses and still don't and it all uh, it affects primarily the central site you retain your peripheral and so it's as if when i'm looking at you and looking at your face i see the outside perimeter which is why i do silhouettes but what I don't see is any of your features. I don't see your eyes, your nose, your mouth. And it may look like I'm looking directly at you, but actually I'm not seeing it. Wow. But as an artist, I know it's there, and mm -hmm. I know that the com way you communicate mm -hmm. is when you actually look and speak and you, you connect mm -hmm. with your eyes. How old were you when you lost your vision? 28. 
But did so you did you mourn and grieve tremendously or initially I didn't really feel I had time to do that. But what was more important that I never felt I would have to struggle with is the art. What was a struggle was the public issue, the social dilemma of now being defined a quote unquote disabled person. Mm. And I never thought of myself that way. I never thought of myself as, as blind. Mm. But I also now recognize the incredible uh, uh, issues that people who are disabled, uh, including m myself, who have been in that category, who are blind, have an incredible amount of knowledge and experience and richness to offer. So what do you see in the hole in the middle? Is it black or is it? No, it's a kind of cloudiness. And so it's not, it's not a solid form and it does shift a little bit, but it's more about being almost as if you're looking through a cloud sitting in the middle. And, 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 and that's more white than black. So it's n not that you see darkness. Uh, you're actually, your eyes aren't able to adjust to the light. But it has taught me this tremendous amount of experience. I don't think that my work would have grown and evolved as much if I hadn't had this experience of altered sight. So when you look at the work, the details of your work, do you have to look from the side of your eye? Well, I used to have to do that. I now have trained my sight to actually look out of my peripheral, which is a complete unnatural mode for your eyes. So I can do that for short periods of time and, and therefore capture. While we're talking, I basically piece you together in fragments. I slightly shift and, therefore, and, and as you move, I remember one piece. And then, so quilting, looking at components like assemblage coming together became the perfect medium for a sight and vision that is in parts, in fragments. And so my day-to-day -day tasks take more time to do than, than most. Reading text, this is the standard text type at about 12, 11, 12 font, but this is what I'm required in order to read. It's, it's larger than 40 font. <laughs> and so, but I now read out of that peripheral site. You have to relearn, adjust. teach yourself, and adjust. But it opens up a whole new universe of experience that you did not perceive before because it was invisible. I kind of now see the things I didn't see before with 2020. And the things that were inside of me have now been able to be projected out rather than the opposite way, which I think for a lot of artists, it's about what you see out in front of you. But for me, this experience taught me it was very important about what I projected and see inside of me. And how much of that is memory that you're working from? 99%, mm. yeah, is wow. memory. And so you learn, but you memory it comes in different forms. It's about knowing um, where the different levels are and spaces are. So when I even back off, off my work by 10 feet, I can no longer see this figure. And uh, so you learn it and you remember it from the way it feels on your hands. And, and, and that way you remember what it is and you know what you're doing as an artist. But yes, as I back away from something, I lose it to that kind of nebulous world. Wow, thank you so much, Ms. Dominique. You say thank you to Ms. Dominique. We have to go now, okay? Yeah, thank you for visiting me. Next time you can visit longer. Yeah, wow. So it just occurred to me that, um, are you gonna drive that vehicle? <laughs> <laughs> no, that beautiful 1954 truck will be a part of my collaboration. Mm -hmm. And so someone will be my dedicated driver wow. for that. So that's and, cool. um, but that's, that's, that's what I think is so exciting.
i've collaborated with a lot of artists. it took a long time to to generate that and get that into into motion and now, you know, to me it makes sense i didn't want to do this project twenty five years ago because i couldn't figure out how to deal with that but now it makes sense awesome there you go. hey mama, come on zion and they are here, you know yes, right here what? You can go. You can go ahead. How long have you been working here, Mar, at the museum? Fourteen years. Fourteen years. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And Dominic's piece is one of the pieces that were here in the permanent collection on display when I first came, and I always found it just fascinating. So warm, so welcoming. So it has been great for me to bring it back after many years in our vault. You follow me. Okay. Where are we going, Mar? The vault. <laughs> the vault. What's in the vault? Not too much right now. <laughs> I almost pull it all out. Yeah. No, no, I'm kidding. This is a lot of good well, stuff. Here. So that's where you keep your permanent coll collection? Uh, Sanatay, we have a lot of the stuff uh, in storage. Mm -hmm. And here are the things that are still accessible. Oh, wow. We still have a lot of good stuff in here. Do you like that? What's in here? What's in here, Zion? A lot of art. Mm -hmm. So you had to go through all of this to find what you wanted in the show. Well, kind of, I knew what was here already, mm -hmm. but but yeah, we also use our databases. Yeah. So like yeah. This moves out. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Wow. Nice. This is the work that people don't see, the behind the scenes, huh? Well, and, and there is many, many more works that are stored uh -huh. in other facilities outside. Wow. This is a very small part of what we have. Wow. We have much more. And we expect people to give us more, hopefully. Because we don't really have a budget for acquisition. Yeah, so you, you work on donations. We build what is that? Our walls, the shop. Our Who, walls, who's that over there? <laughs> Hi, Miss Dominique. They build walls here. Uh -huh. Cases. Bookcases, displays. Come on in. Hi, Dominique. How are Ooh. you doing? <laughs> Good, Good to see you. you. We're just getting Ooh. some little shops in yeah. the museum. So you were saying that's the, the shop? Ooh. Yeah, where they build the, the walls, uh, vitrines, pedestals, etc. Where, uh -huh. where do they do the restoration of some of the works? Uh, we don't really have a restoration uh -huh. space. Uh -huh. um, sometimes Go give her a hug. Go give Miss Dominique a hug. I'm restore sorry. a few pieces that usually has been in the galleries. <laughs> Go give her a hug. Go give Miss Dominique a hug. She's excited about going to your studio. She is. Yeah. She wants to go to Miss Dominique's studio. Mermaid. I like mermaids. They're my favorites. Come over here just a second and let me show you. We're gonna have noise. They're putting the frame around the around the wall banner. So this is behind the scenes. You don't get a chance to see behind the scenes. How do we do all of this? So here's a little thing for you to know about the California African American Museum. We produce wallpaper, the walls. Most of the shows you see here we actually build right here at camp. And now they're framing it so that by the time you're through, you think it's billboard. Yeah, so you have your own um, printers. Mm -hmm. yeah. printers. Here's another real quick. Oh, yeah. If you ever get a chance to go into the Golden State Mutual Life Insurance Company at Adams and Western, there are huge, gigantic murals, and they tell the story of the history of blacks in California, both in terms of exploration and in terms of our settlement. These are mock-ups of those murals with the information about them, and you can go into our video room and see the photographs that everyone took that helped to tell the story of, of all of the people who were, whether it's Biddy Mason or James Beckworth, who discovered the lowest points going across the Sierras, um, the priests, etc. This tells you the California story. It's not just a black story, but it tells you how we as blacks pass through California's history. Go in the show. Go in there. Go in there, honey. 
in the process now. And the materials we see, like we keep pushing, we will not be able to make sure everybody sees that. Because our mission is art, history, and culture, it seems to me we're always trying to figure out how are we telling our story from our eyes and how others are seeing us. I am particularly fond of this piece of Dominique Moody's because I remember when we first had it in a show that was part of a collaboration we did with several other museums, culturally specific museums. Now to have it here with us, it represents family. I mean, look at it. It's the sense of the umbrella overhanging everybody, the sense of love and attachment, her use of being able to make work out of collage and out of cardboard, out of wood, it is an extraordinary piece, and it reflects the kind of relationship we've had with her as an artist. Yeah, and especially as I began to develop more and more my, my assemblage work, mm -hmm. um, it was always important for me to incorporate an object, um, lit, uh, an object that I've had experience with into the work. And both the painting that it, this was originally a part of was resurrected into a whole new sculptural piece. But the umbrella came, it was one of the first um, uh, purchases I made in New York as an emancipated 15 year old living on my own and going to school at Pratt Institute. And so I had bought that umbrella. And in many ways, I felt it was a form of kind of protection for me. You know, it was this strong wooden umbrella and that if need be, I would use it <laughs> to defend myself. And in the so, streets of New York. In the streets <laughs> of New York. Um, but also, the, this is based on an actual story reunion, of an actual reunion that I went to. And that I, this scene was described to me because I could not see it. So this piece, Reunion, is based on an actual life experience. And it was a reunion that I had the family in Baltimore, Maryland, and it was um, over with that day, but it was a hot, muggy day, and so we all had gotten into the cars, we were ready to leave, and the eldest of the family members remained in the house in the air conditioning, and then came out. And I could not see this scene, because I was too far away, and my eyesight would not permit me uh, to, to, to view it. But it had started to rain, and it was raining and sun shining all at the same time. And they came out of the house, and one of my relatives, who's, we, we run tall in our family, held this huge umbrella over their heads as they came out. And my sister is describing this to me. And what I found, it was such a beautiful narrative of her description that it retained in my head, because it was not something I could see, this scene. And so reunion came out of that, using my own umbrella, using these beautiful crystal drops as the rain, and coming up with a way to incorporate the family, the quilting, the connection, the use of silhouette imagery, and um, a lot of references like to old newspapers, uh, black newspapers, the use of the African mask and the collage face, uh, the kind of Romare Bearden um, uh, response. And once again, just like so many other artists, I've been inspired by all of these things, all of this richness, and it has come to fruition in reunion. Are you able to see how beautiful the detail is? Uh, details like this. Well, I, I just spoke to, to, to Mar earlier about not seeing it for so long. And I really treasure not seeing my work for a while and coming upon it again. Because then, after you've made it and you, you still have this connect, this tie, I don't have children, but I think it might be pretty similar. You don't have this umbilical connection to it. It's of its own self. It has its own life. And then I can view it as a viewer, as opposed to being the artist, the so creator. A of different it. relationship. It's a different relationship. 
and i love that relationship it teaches me because it teaches me where i was at the time and how it stands on its own today when you made it was your vision impaired or did you have full vision at the time? no my my vision was impaired at that time and that's why it, because this originated as a two-dimensional painting that was then damaged in a move um, bringing it back to life as a three-dimensional object and sculptural piece was a wonderful evolution and it was a way for them for me to see it and see it even truer than when it was as a painting are these um, pictures your real relatives or are they random people no these are um, made up of composites both from uh, advertisements but what I have found is that we often try to see our representation in things. That's why I think the narrative and seeing ourselves represented is still so important. Uh, and, and I see myself in all those images. And when you go to a reunion, you realize there are these hundreds of people that you barely know, and they're all related to you within just a few generations. And so, to me, to use any image was meaning we're all family and we're all connected in that way. So beautiful. I love this piece. I just sat here and looked at it for so long. Couldn't keep my eyes off of it. So beautiful. That's great. What's that? What do you have there? That's okay. good. So this is one of those things that I felt now that it is possible to mm -hmm. do an online book mm -hmm. that I needed to just go ahead and do my own book instead of waiting Can for somebody to uh, publish it. Oh, and, and that's, that's you in a J. Michael. Sure. I was part Pickle of the series, Thank you. Um, oh, Mapping what? Time. Oh, wow. That's nice. So you've made your own book? Yes. How much did that cost you to make? Uh, well, it's a combination. The printing is because they're printing on demand, uh -huh. so each book is about $150. But for people, you know, I don't have artworks for $150. And in this is my collection of work over the years I've been here in, L in LA. Wow. And this way, people are able to oh, beautiful. have. Do you assign it, Dominic? When did yeah. you publish that? It, it's just it's just finishing up now, and, I, and so in total, it, it, with the graphic artist, I one of my previous students, he knew the technical side, I knew what I wanted to capture, and just one, I had I went to. Uh, That's beautiful. I knew I needed to have some writing, and like we were speaking about, I don't have. A real critique. Uh, it's never been done on my work. So I went oh, to like Paul a Von Bloom. Oh, okay. And, a review. and he decided to put it into a historical context and wrote the foreword and the essay. But he's great. <laughs> uh, Paul Von Bloom. Do you know Paul? Oh. He's great. That and was in this space. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. You were saying? Um, this book took me ten, 10 months to create and with the help of a graphic arts student, mm. one of my, uh, and, and just dedication to what my body of work was. Wow. And so it was important for me to, to capture this because this is a period of my work. And these works will not be done in the same way anymore. And um, it was important to not wait for uh, someone else to do it but to take on that role. And so you have, um, you create something that, you know, you have control over. And in terms of if you want to say something about your work, you say it. And what are the, whose words are those? Th these are all my narratives about my own work. Wow, 
that's beautiful. So are you going to present that to museums to sell? Great. The use of the quilt as a visual material component was to take a actual living story of my nephew who was killed in Miami at 17 by the police in Miami. Basically a Trayvon Martin all over, you know, again it repeats itself over and over. And my sister who made this as a cradle quilt. So it was a family quilt and she had made it in Jamaica uh, for her child, her only son. And when he was uh, uh, murdered by police in Miami at the age of 17. She had given me the quilt prior to that and she wanted it back in order to bury him in it because that was his baby quilt. And so I photocopied it to preserve the memory of the quilt because it was so beautiful and I knew it would never be seen again otherwise. And so it was really wonderful once this reunion happened and I wanted to do this piece, that this be a component in it.